There we go. What is up? What is up, Facebook? It's Wednesday. You know what time it is. It's time. It's time for Driven. How are you doing? More importantly, how are you feeling? I hope you feel good because you know what I say. You know what I say. What's up, Kim? What's up, Brandon? What's up, Eddie, brother? When you feel good, 99.99999% of the time, you will do good. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about doing good. I see you too, Brad. Thank you for popping in here tonight. We got a great night planned. So grab a pad and a pen and write some stuff down. Have some fun. Take notes. Watch who this is. Watch who I am. Watch what we're going to do tonight. And just sit back and enjoy it and have some fun because you're going to get a little bit of insight on what exactly it means to create discomfort on purpose in your own life to make it more comfortable. Because when you seek discomfort, comfort comes to you. You may make yourself comfortable in those uncomfortable positions so you can do the things you want to do. What is this? Who am I? And what are you going to get out of it? This is driven. You're going to get three things out of this tonight. Number one, I lost it. <laughs> Proof that no matter what, no matter where you start out from, you can work it out. And I say that a lot at the end of my episodes. No matter where you're at, you're just a decision away from making it happen. And tonight we're going to prove that no matter where you start from, no matter what tools you start with, you can get the job done if you put in the work and you put in the time. Number two, you're going to see what seeking uncomfort or discomfort actually can do for you. Number three, you're going to meet a guy that's going to revolutionize how the dogs of the world are changed. Can I get some love on that? How many people? Drop it in the comments if you have dogs. One, if you got one. Two, if you got two. Carla Anderson up in there, up in Canada, I think she has like 10. Or if you watch my advertisement, like seven. I don't know. I can't even count. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're feeling good. We're going to have a great show tonight. If you know me, thank you for coming in tonight. If you've been here before, I appreciate you coming back. And if this is the first time you watch this show, I'm glad you're here. And I hope you come into our family, come into my network, Reach out to me and say hello. What is up, everybody? EJ, Peter, everybody, appreciate it. Again, I'm Scott. I'm a dad. I'm a sledder. And I have my vision set on exactly what I want to accomplish. It takes time. It takes process. And this is the journey just before I press this button. Man, I got that uncomfortable feeling. I was like... I'm uncomfortable. I'm not in my situation. I'm not in my element. And you know what I said? Five, four, three, two, one, boom. And I press play and I hit record and here we are. What's up, Jeremy? Love you, man. It's about being uncomfortable. This is Driven. It's a show we created for a, piece, a place for people to grow. Come grow your network, grow your mindset, have some fun, maybe learn some, some something, something, and absolutely connect with people because connections are what makes things happen you got to make those connections this is a place to grow that mindset and if you feel me on that drop me some fire you knew i was gonna say that drop me some fire what's up curtis you guys are tearing it up having a great time thank you for coming in here can you feel me can you feel me I want to give a big thanks. Uh, last week, I totally spaced it, and I want to get it out now before I forget it because I tend to do that. I want to give a big thank you and a big shout-out to Josh Weesey of the Sponsor Writer Club podcast. We posted it in the comments last one, but we put up a we put up a, a, a podcast last Tuesday where he interviewed me, and since then, I've just had a ripple effect of great conversations from that podcast. So be sure and check it out. It's in the comments on episode 17. I'll probably drop it back in here. You can get it on iTunes or you can get it at sponsoredwriterclubpodcast.com. I remembered that time. That's what I'm talking about. I hit mindset a lot in this show. And for those of you that keep returning back, um, I hope you're getting some value out of that. I hit it a lot because... Honestly, that's what kind of turned the ship for me. I got a long way to go. I got a big ocean in front of me, but, you know, I'm not headed down the same road that I was headed down prior to, uh, you know, 
opening a book, connecting with people like Eddie Martin, like Brad, like Chris, like all these people that are pushing me to be better and, and, they're, and they're giving me some power to reach inside and learn some new things and have some fun and do this show and connect with everybody and I love it. So thank you guys so much for everybody coming in. And if you ask any successful person, a lot of times, most of the time, they're going to attribute a couple things to their success and it's that foundation, it's that personal development foundation that they've established, that they've committed themselves to, to work on every day, to, to grow a little bit every day, and to handle things like Eddie talked about tonight on The Hustle, about handling that, you know, that overwhelmed feeling. It's, it, a lot of it ties back to the personal development and or coaching and or coaching. That's what I'm talking about. So I hit those subjects a lot, get some help, get some personal development, and get ready to take on the world. That's right, Josh, because it'll build your foundation. Share this out because this is a story. Honestly, share this episode out. I want to see it. Drop it in the comments. Hashtag shared if you do, and I'll give you a shout out. I appreciate all the shares. That's how we grow this project. That's how we're, that's how we're getting these numbers and having some fun and, and increasing our reach. But tonight's story is something you have got to hear. And I don't want to go into it too much right now because we're going to step into it and we're going to save a bunch of for the end because it's gonna get lit after we learn a little bit of who Garrett is. I took a trip about a month ago and we're talking about discomfort today again. What a beautiful people Garrett says. He's stoked as I am. He's got some big news to share and after we learn about who he is, we're gonna learn about what he's about ready to do. About oh, a little over a month ago, I put myself in another uncomfortable situation. I kind of forced myself to it and it was in a few different ways. It was not only going outside of like what my norm was and going to meet some people that I didn't really know. But I put myself in that situation. We're going to touch on it in a minute when I bring Garrett up. But had I not put myself in that situation, I wouldn't have met Garrett. I wouldn't have had the conversations I had with him down there. What up, buddy? And I wouldn't have met a ton of good people and grown myself personally had I not put myself in that situation. And, you know, I wasn't really... It wasn't planned, it wasn't organized very well, and, but I did it. I took action on it, I kind of sensed I needed to do it, and I made myself do it, and I'm super thankful that I was able to complete it. That's what I'm talking about, that's what this show's about, and I'm hoping you're going to get some value from it, because you're going to about ready to see somebody that's making himself real uncomfortable. You know, learning to embrace that mindset that the uncomfortable situations essentially become your comfortable ones. I posted a, a podcast from the Brad Lee, which we're again going to talk about in a minute about being uncomfortable and making yourself uncomfortable on purpose. But once you can embrace that mindset of, you know, I don't really want to do this, but I need to do this. I need to put myself in this situation because the person that's going to come out on the other side, no matter what the outcome is, successful, unsuccessful, the person that comes out on the other side of that is a different person than the one that went into it. And you know what? When he face that with that situation again, it's going to be a little less uncomfortable. And he's going to, you know, f or he, she, them, they're going to feel a little bit better stepping into that role. And and whether they've done it or it's a new thing and it's a new task, he'd be like, hey, well, I just did that. I No problem. I can do this. Can you feel me on that? Drop me a... Drop me some ones in the in the comment box if if creating those uncomfortable situations for you have made you helped you in any way handle different things that pop up. So seeking discomfort to actually find your comfort. That's what we're talking about tonight, and we're gonna have some fun. I want to thank you guys all for coming on here tonight. Let's share this out. Let's have some fun. The gentleman you're about ready to meet. I'll tell you what. We had a conversation last night, and he's like. I don't know if I should talk about this. I don't know if and he's like, ah, screw it. Let's just talk about it. Let's do it. Let's go. And, and he's really embracing the go all in mindset. And you're about ready to hear out exactly what that is. But without further ado, Cody. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Faces on face. That's right. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate that. Chris, Mark, what's up, brother? From my heart, mate. Yeah, that's what it ones. Brad knows that's what I'm talking about. All right, let's do this. Oh, here we go. Learning to embrace that mindset, those challenges and op challenges that you face. I kind of lost my, I, I, I was going to say this earlier, but hey, it happens. It's Facebook Live. Seeking those uncomfortable situations, 
they, they'll they actually start to create the comfortable situations. In turn, when you're in those comfort situations and you're doing good and you're feeling good, they'll actually turn into opportunities. So you'll see that, oh wait, there's something, there's a task, there's a chore, there's a job, there's a whatever, a client that is very challenging. I'm gonna go over there and put myself in that situation, that uncomfortable situation, and then it's gonna turn into an opportunity to, you know, maybe, Maybe somebody is having a bad day. Maybe that person is typically hard to handle or has a very opinionated personality and you gotta go deal with them and you don't really want to. Think of it this way. It's like hitting a golf ball. That little ball, it never moves. It's always the same, it's always right there. A lot of times it's on a tee, it couldn't be any on a, any better perfect of a lie, but you know what's hard? Is to hit it consistently every time. That's gonna happen, but with practice, with repetition, guess what? You hit that ball a little more square, or it goes a little more straight every time, or it just straight miss it, duff it, goes off on the <laughs> off on the ground about 20 feet in front of you. That's golf, you know. And if you compare that to life, this has been done a lot. A perfect situation rarely is there. You're always gonna have a little bit of grass around the ball, and you're gonna have a little bit of you know uneven lie, or you're gonna be above or below it. But you've trained yourself, you've prepared yourself, and you can make adjustments to your swing or to you know how you're standing to be able to compensate for that. So seeking discomfort, think of it like hitting a golf ball. It's not always going to be perfect, but because you practice it and you've done it enough, you've stepped into that role that you're going to be able to hit that ball. And you know what? It's golf. Sometimes it's going to go in the woods. That happens. And that's life too. When you're in the shit storm, sometimes you smell like shit. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So I got that point across. I appreciate it again. What's up, John? Thank you for coming on. Hey, man, I'm so glad you made it. You got to hear this story tonight. Oh, it's going to be good. Without further ado, I'm going to bring on Garrett. I'm, again, I met him in Vegas a little over a month ago, a month and a half ago at Growth Con at 10X, along with a lot of these fine folks that are popping on here. It was a great event. Mr. Cardone does it well. All right, here we go. I'm going to bring him on. I'm going to stop talking so we don't get mixed up there he is uh oh is your phone <laughs> Garrett is your phone in landscape mode back out come back in put your phone in landscape mode dang What's up, Beasley? Thanks for coming on. That's all. Oh, yeah, Savage. Check this out. Man, love it. Get that Savage grind. Filling it out. Daily, I appreciate it. Check it out, savagegrind.com. Badass planner. Come on now, Garrett. We got to get your phone in landscape mode because it says I cannot invite you on. So go ahead and back on out of here and come back in and then maybe we can do... There we go. Thank you for dropping that in there, Eddie Martin. Appreciate that. Shout out to you. There we are. What up? Were you not in landscape mode? I don't know what I did. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Most of the time, I don't either, but I can wing it pretty good. And I can, if not, I can talk about some stuff and fill in the gaps. So what is up, my man? What's happening? Welcome to Driven. I'm stoked to have you on. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How How is all these beautiful people doing? Dude, we're packing the house tonight. I told you it'd be a live show. We'd be full, and we're about ready to go off. So I want to dive in a little bit. We're going to chit-chat here for a minute, but don't let the details out. We're going to save that till the end, um, okay. and then we're going to go into what, <laughs> what exactly jumping out of an airplane without a parachute means to this guy right next to me. So save that. Okay. So, anyway, what, where do you want to start? What's new? What'd you do today? How are you feeling? Uh, well, as you know, yesterday I won't get way into details yet. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But today I enjoyed the day with a good friend of mine. We went fishing, caught some fish, came back, had a few meetings. We made some money, uh, made some new connections, uh, networked a bunch today, and here we are now. Love it. That sounds like a good day. That's feeling yeah, good and that's doing that. good. <laughs> you know, if a guy could just write that up, it's like, hey, what do I want to do 
I don't know, say for the next like 30 years, uh, fish, check, got to do that. Make some money, check, let's do that. Hang out with friends, check, do that. That's a script for like, I'm going to say a pretty, pretty happy setup. Yeah, it's a great setup. <laughs> That's time freedom. That's time freedom. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're kind of all seeking out here, I think, a little bit, is that time freedom and the ability to do that and make sure shit gets done, too. How we doing out there? Are we delayed at all? Can you hear us all right? Can you see us okay? Drop a all good in the comments for me if we are doing good on the on the sound bro awesome live thank you mr george george we'll go george garrett says all good he can hear me he can see me <laughs> all right brother let's do this what is if you were supposed if you were going to give a quick what is garrett about just a flash a value packed explanation of what you are let's throw that out there now so everybody kind of gets a little feel for who you are exactly all right. Uh, I am a, uh, I'm never satisfied. That's probably the best one to put it. Um, yeah. as I was always told that was a burden. It's not now after having several conversations this past, uh, uh, uh these past, I would say probably year, I'd say past year, but, uh, I'm never mm -hmm. satisfied. I'm always driven. I'm a 30 uh, year old entrepreneur, man. And it, you got to take risks to get big. And we're, uh, as we're going to talk about in a little bit, I'm going to explain, uh, the jumping out of the jumping out of the plane without a parachute, but not having a plan for somebody to catch you. It's more like we'll figure it out after we jump. So, uh, but that's <laughs> go into what all, all in is we're gonna go into it. So, but right on, uh, it is gonna be, yeah. dude. I'm 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 pumped to to give a definition of what all in is to people to get a little. I mean, it was I was like, whoa, I was nowhere near all in. I'm just kind of in compared to this guy <laughs> over here. Yeah, absolutely, man. We're going to get, uh, yeah, we'll go into that here in just a few minutes. It's going to be big, though. Big, big, big. All right, big. dude. The, here's the coolest thing about my story I want to tell real quick is is when I went down to Vegas, you know, I'm going, it was a networking event, uh, and I'm down there, I'm cruising, I met the people that I wanted to meet, and Eddie Martin actually mm -hmm. introduced uh, Garrett and I, and he's like, we got to talking, lived in Cody. I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, I live in Wyoming, too. I love it up there. It's a great area. And then, boom, next thing you know, we're in Vegas in a massive, I mean, there's 10,000 entrepreneurs there and, and we're having a conversation about mod sleds and riding snowmobiles and how awesome shredding is. And I'm like, dude, I like no way could I go down to Vegas and find somebody to have a conversation with sledding. So let, I, like, that was badass, man. I appreciate that. That was a great way to meet. Yeah, it was a great way. I mean, it was really cool to be able to bond over, being able to explain that. Uh and talk about how a lot of my friends do snow cross and, and did well with it. And, and then being able to say my little bit of experience I had with it. Uh, uh, but my, I just love the, the tinkering and again, never satisfied, always doing something. I love it. I love it. He showed me a picture and like, I might have to, I might have to get it from him and throw it up. But was it, it was a, was it like 1200 CC triple? That's built triple by a guy light. named Brad. Yeah. Built by a guy named Brad. He's out of Logan with Power Addictions. Uh, he built a, this crazy mod sled. And I've just, that's kind of like my dream of what I'm going to own. Like one day I'm buying yeah. something like that that is just way beyond. It's out there, but it's like a dream, if you will. <laughs> but that, I still have those pictures on my phone. That's why I was showing it to you. I had the pictures on my phone because, like, I'll get off into my own world and I'll start looking at that picture going, I'm going to own that again. I'm going to own that. That's yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. be mine. Yeah. Keep the fuel going. I love it, man, dude. That's, we got to have a whole other show talking about mod sleds and having fun with that, but I'm not the expert in that, so that's not what I'm going to talk about. We're here to talk about being uncomfortable and doing some business and jumping all in. So with that said, brother, who is Garrett? Man, Never all right, all right. Me. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> uh so kind of just a little quick history on me first so people can understand where I come from. Uh, I'm a high school dropout. I did not complete high school. I dropped out not knowing how to read. Uh, to get my GED, when I did get my GED, I, uh, I had it read to me. Got my driver's license, I had it read to me. My CDL was read to me. I went to the oil field. Got left the oil field to get where I'm at now. 
and uh, uh, animals have always been a huge passion for me. It doesn't matter if it's a dog, a cat, birds, horses. I just, I love animals. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, my wife was uh, thankful. My wife was ready to jump in with me. And uh, I abandoned the oil field, started a dog training company, joined a franchise, started a dog training company, decided that wasn't enough, started a kennel. And uh, we blew that kennel into the into the size of kennel it is today. And uh, we, we see anywhere from 70 to 90 dogs a day in Casper, Wyoming. Awesome. Awesome. Built from nothing. Can't read. Drop out of high school. Yeah, and learned how to read. Yeah, and, and the not knowing how to read thing, I've definitely have improved. Now, what I started doing to learn yeah. how to read is I would – buy a book from like Amazon would receive the book. And then I would go on to audible, get the book and then follow along. And that's how I, that's how I majority started to learn how to read. Uh, I know I'm a decent reader now, but when I dropped out of high school, I had a third grade reading level. You have to have a yeah third grade leading level. You have to have a seventh grade reading level to get your GED. And they said I did it cause I got the GED, but half the time I'm kind of like, I think they're just seeing me. So, I, <laughs> so yeah i love it man dude we had like i we had a killer conversation last night there was a lot of this i hadn't heard yet we just we just done some get to know you type conversation talked about snowmobiling the whole time and he starts rolling this stuff off and i'm like bro like are you killing because i know what he i know what he's created in the dog training world and in casper with his kennel i'm like Man, like that alone, just like that little bit of information, you could break that up, write a book, give somebody some steps on how to overcome adversity and absolutely crush it. And you're about, like, that's what I'm talking about. You're about to do it again. And that's what's got me so fired up. I'm like, can we just skip all this and get to the crazy part? But we're not going to. We got to lead up to it. It's called a thing. I'm going to give some shout outs here quick. Thank you, everybody, for interacting. Terry, I do appreciate you. Kyle, what's up? Mike, Meredith, Daniel, Jesse, what's up, cuz? Thank you, guys. Again, if you guys get some value from this, let's pack this house for what the announcement's about ready to be. Um, share this out. Drop share it in the comments. We can come back, and I can, uh, I can hit you and give you a shout out. I appreciate all the shares from everybody. All right, dude, so you've built... You've, you've built a successful kennel. You've built a successful dog training business. You're passionate about animals. You know, let's talk a little bit about what happened. Three years ago, you had an idea pop in your mind. And without going into too many details about the idea, how did you ha tell, tell me how you handled that idea and, and the steps you took after having the initial uh, Yeah. Plan. Um yeah, absolutely. That's where that kind of the discomfort part comes into. And, and I know we're going to get into some other things, but uh, yeah, I had this idea pop into my head about three ish years ago, maybe a little less and a uh, huge idea. Loved it was all like, I thought it was great. And, and then I listened to all the, and I, we call it noise in the entrepreneur world, but um, uh, uh, you, I listened to all the noise around me instead of just breaking through it. I listened to it. And uh, I let the idea go because now all of a sudden it, it wasn't a good idea. Uh, I let it go. I just got rid of it, moved on. Uh, then fast forward to the first growth con in Miami, Florida. I went down to that. Uh, again, I listened to Brad Lee, which we're going to really be talking about Brad Lee here in a minute. Uh, I listened to Brad Lee, got up on stage, and Brad Lee spoke about what it is he does with Lightspeed VT and, and how he, you know, 17 years of uh, 15, at the time, 15 years of just learning how to do it wrong, you know, and the idea, hit me again. yeah, the idea hit me again. I had a buddy there with me. We, uh, I, I had a yellow notebook and I just went to town writing this like 10 page deal. Uh, I ended up not listening to any more of the speakers at the entire growth con. Uh, for those of you that have been to growth con, it ain't cheap to go. It's worth it. Every freaking penny, every time don't hesitate, but it isn't cheap to be there. You're Miami, Florida, whatever. Right. Uh, uh, and I go through and I write all this stuff down. I end up missing like most of the speakers because I'm so zoned in on the idea. I get the idea. I go home and I'm like, I got this whole idea. It's 10 pages and, and, and it's, I'm, I'm kind of fired back up. I'm ready for it again. And I listen to the noise and I threw the idea away again. 
Um, I didn't throw the notebook away. I just put the notebook. I just, I didn't do it again. Uh, yeah. And then, then I kind of get fired back into the idea. This is where Eddie comes into the picture. Eddie calls me out of the blue, actually out of, out of all things. He just, just, uh, it was literally a cold call. So Eddie Martin calls me, I know you listen to Eddie, so shout out, but uh, Eddie calls me out of the blue, cold call. I'm talking with him. He said, man, what happened to this idea? What happened? And I kind of told him and we went back and forth a little bit. And I said, you know, I think we could fire back up into it. And I'm like, great. Well, cool. And I literally, this is our conversation. This is Eddie and I's conversation. And I would love if he got yeah. back on here and said how this went. This is our conversation. I, Eddie calls me. I go, he goes, what happened to the idea? And I said, check it out. I'm done wasting my time with a stupid idea because now it's stupid. Okay. The stupid idea. Yeah. I don't care what you think, what you want. All I want to know is what it's going to cost to start and get going and what you're going to do to help me. As it, I was like, I don't care. I don't care about you. I don't care about Brad. I don't care about any of it. Just tell me these two things. And he's like, cool. And just answers it right then and there. Boom. So he tells, <laughs> me, he tells me the price and he tells me the value at which they're going to help me. He, he is going to help me. Okay. And that's me. That's important. Value is huge. He explains that to me. And I'm like, cool, I'm all in, uh, I'm broke. Let me go get the money, I'll call you back. Uh, I can't get the money I, uh, because I'm, I'm, I run a kennel. By the way, our kennel is like, uh, we, don't, we didn't pull bank loans. We just kind of built it as we could. So, yep. uh, which I tell, I just I say use other people's debt is the way that comes down. So yeah. then I call Eddie and I say, hey, I need you to come up here and help me. Uh, so I fly Eddie to Casper, Wyoming. We, uh, we have like, I don't know, seven or eight meetings with people just with this idea and no one takes it. No one. One person jumped on board and they're like, Hey, you know what? I don't know if it's the idea, but I trust you. So writes a check. I'm like, cool. You're my partner. I gave this person a large rev share because it was the only person who tr trusted it. And mind you, wasn't near enough money, not even close <laughs> to the amount of money we needed. Not any, not even a sliver, <laughs> okay? Uh, but it was enough to get the idea traction and now I have somebody I, I gotta hold account. I'm accountable to somebody. And that was the big push. That was the key to that, that push out the airplane, if you will. Uh, that was yep. kind of it. Now I have somebody that I have to answer to or that trusts me and holds me personally responsible. Love it. Have the idea. Back shelved it, whatever reason. People tell you it couldn't. People tell you it didn't work. People tell you there's no money. They're not going to help mm -hmm. you. They can't do it. One person turns out to help you. And I want to hit real quick on on uh, on the pursuit and, and just the 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 mindset of why it will work, even if there's a thousand reasons why it won't work. The mindset of being able to place right next to it. A reason why it will work a reason why it will work a reason why it will work and then block out the reasons why it won't work so we have not enough money <laughs> all it is is an idea and people are saying it won't work where's the mindset at to be able to be like you know what it will and this is why and this is why and this is why yeah so uh i guess if you're good with it let's just lead into the bombshell of this whole thing let's drop it man It'd be all right cool so check it out around. again Let's drop some fire emojis if you want to hear what's <laughs> about to go down. Yeah, drop so here's what we do. Yeah, so here's what we do. This is big. So again, <laughs> I'm back. I'm back in Vegas month, month, month and a half ago. I'm with Eddie, uh, 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 you, a uh, uh, handfuls of of entrepreneurs. I'm getting introduced to everybody. It's awesome. Uh, again, we start talking about snowmobiles and oh, dude, I got a buddy that's snow cross and uh, whatever, right? And it's huge. And uh, so we get done and Eddie and I are, uh, and mind you, uh, I didn't get a ticket. I didn't get a ticket to GrowthCon. I didn't have the money. Eddie hooked me up with, through Brad Lee. Brad Lee hooked me up, got me in. So it was huge to be there. Uh, and I was there and I was in there listening to Brad Lee. I watched it. He's talking about brush your teeth. I loved it. You got to brush your teeth. You got you to do all this <laughs> stuff. And yeah. And so Eddie and I are talking after the, the night ends. We're all sitting there. We're with you and a few other people. And I told Eddie, I said, you know, the sad part to this whole thing, there's 10,000 people here and none of them are going to do it. 
and none of them are going to do it. And the reason they're not going to do it is because there's so much, there's so many mentors and the idea is there, the drive is there, right? And then what happens is then so another mentor comes in from the side and they have the same drive, but they tweak the idea just a little bit. So you're like, oh, I love that. And then so you kind of start following that, right? And the problem you end up making, you never move forward. You actually never pursue forward yeah. with any of it. And that's the conversation we had. Uh, there, there was, uh, I think Brian, I think Brian Hess is in there, uh, which he's doing some big stuff. Uh, there's a few of us all there, right? And I tell him, I go, if one person would just pick one of these guys, if one person would just take one of these, pick a mentor and just do what that mm -hmm. mentor says, follow them to a T, don't change the plan, don't change the strategy, I promise you they would succeed. Promise you. So, bombshell, here we go. Uh, we, end the, we end up, we come home, I'm sitting in my office, my wife is watching this, so she can, she can shout out on <laughs> this is true. I know she, I know she's watching. Uh, I'm in my office. I'm kind of, that's where I'm at right now. I'm kind of staring off in the abyss slash computer. And uh, I go, uh, she comes in, she goes, what's up? You don't look like you're all there. What's going on? I said, I'm going to sell the companies. And she's like, you're going to, oh, okay. And maybe we can talk about it, you know, and we can, we can figure it out. And I'm like, yeah, uh, I already signed the contract with the realtor. And she went from instant, we could talk about it to like, turn around, I don't want to talk now. <laughs> like, I just like, I didn't discuss anything with her. And this is hers too. It's not just me. It's and I'm like, I'm selling. And so she can't believe what's going on. And uh, I get on the phone with Eddie. I'm like, you're never going to believe what I'm doing. I threw the companies up for sale. I'm talking with my wife right now. I, like I told her, it's probably going to take months. I've never heard of companies just selling right now. You never hear of mm -hmm. it just happening. I'm like, it's going to take time. We're going to build this. I'm going to start following Brad to a T. I'm going to do what I complained about in Vegas. Yeah. I'm going to follow one mentor. And uh, dude, four days. <laughs> four days. <laughs> we, company, I don't have a plan B. <laughs> yeah, four days. The company, the company sells. So uh, we go through all that. Um, we just signed yesterday. We went under contracts. Everything's been, yeah, we just thought. Just to catch everybody up, if you're just hopping in here, this is like a one-month window where this all starts to go down. So, again, this is Garrett. One-month window, lights a torch, burns a, it doesn't burn his whole company down, but basically yeah. signs the papers over and gets yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I sign papers. We sell. We got a awesome couple coming in. I'm so pumped about. They're very passionate with animals. That's huge. That's part of the biggest plus to it. So, I step yeah. in. We go. I call Eddie. I'm like, all right, check it out. Here's what we're doing. And I say we're because he's kind of involved whether he thinks he is or he isn't. <laughs> so yeah. I just say we're like, by the way, you're on my team. You may not have thought you were, but you are now. So we start forecasting like, okay, what could some of the troubles with this be? Or not troubles, but we start for what are some of the criticism that we're going to get, right? So I go, I go a step farther. I go, okay, here's what I want to do. I get a videographer, I get an editor, I, hi, I, I bring these people on our team. Mind you, we're going to get why there's no money involved again. Uh, I take these guys on, okay, and we are filming as of, we've already started actually, uh, from day one to at least one minimum of, it, of one year. So 365 days, uh -huh. we're going to film the journey from the day we start this whole thing, which is we have, technically is June, but we're going to do it now, and through one year to see what success really is. By following that one mentor and doing what that when that mentor I'm following is Brad Lee. That's who I'm following. That's who I'm going to listen to. That's what everything's happening. Okay? And we're going to follow that. Now, we started forecasting, all right, what criticism might, might we see in the future? Okay, how about this guy? And this is the number one thing we got. We go, okay... This guy sells. You got it. Go ahead. You you got a premise that that your the show the documentation the journey is from ground zero from nothing from no money, no business, no mm -hmm. nothing. Here's the idea. Here's the one mentor. I'm going all in. Not not losing track. I hate to take yeah. you off your track, but I think you kind of missed that point. Yeah, absolutely. So we go. Yeah, ab thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm so pumped about it. I got all this info. So 
Eddie and I start talking and I go, you know, one of the big criticism we're going to get is, well, he sold his companies. He took all the cash that was available and he, and he, and he, he invested. And I was like, all right, well, I can solve that. And so he's like, all right. And I said, let's just take any profitable cash, that money that I would have been left over from the sale. Let's donate it. We did. We gave it away. So we give the money away. We get, there's, <laughs> there's no money. So <laughs> we're going to go from day one, no money, no money. And we're just going to build a brand new company from day one. And it's all being documented. All of this is being documented with videos. I'm talking all the way down to, I have a guy, I have a video person following me to the gym. I have I, it, 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 and because I, if you couldn't tell, I'm not in the best of shape, right? <laughs> so, so I mean, we're, we're, gonna, well, we're documenting the whole thing from day one to wherever it gets to. And all it's going to be is a brand new business, one mentor and coming from, and, and we want to build it from nothing. Not, and that's, and literally from nothing. So we took the sell of a company uh, and, and, and I think that's what's most concerning to me too was something I put, you know, eight years of passion into, uh, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, everybody thinks I'm worried about, or, or a lot of people are worried about it, but I'm not because I see who's buying it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm so, well, I'm so in, 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 it. in perspective, like there you are. I mean, you and your wife, you got an excellent business. You got a great team essentially you could run that kennel for the next 30 years, automate some stuff. You'll be on autopilot and you're in comfy land. You're generating income, taking care of your family, doing some of the things you enjoy to do. You should be good to go. You should be set. You built a company. You should be good. Yeah, absolutely. Torch it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we take it and I go, okay, here's the, the and, and, and here's the profit that would have came from it. Let's give it mm -hmm. away. Let's donate, donate it. it. Let's donate it. Let's just take it and, and we're going to charity. It's going to charity and we're starting from ground zero so we can show live, if you will, day to day, how we went through to, to do that, how, what we had to go through. Love it. I, I'm assuming all your employees know that you sold the company, right? I just see, I just see one. They on didn't. There, it might've been. No, if they <laughs> didn't, no, 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 everybody, everybody knows we've got, yeah, now everybody knows. Everybody, everybody knows now. So we've had some great conversations. Everybody's real excited too. Uh, it's it's gonna be cool. I love it. I love it. I want to hit now again some fewer shout outs again. If you guys are just jumping on, I appreciate you being in here. This is Gary Newfield, uh, owner of Canine Corral and Sit Means Sit in Casper, Wyoming. Former owner of canine corral and sit means sit a successful dog training outfit inside inside the casper area one of the top school top training facilities in wyoming and got rid of it and starting over because he's choosing to yeah Woo! yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so you're gonna do a daily vlog is it is that what it is it's a daily vlog type deal maybe a couple days weekly have you set that up yet it should be it should be daily it's going to be daily we're going to launch the actual vlog itself june 1st that's the plan that okay. way we have some footage ready to go because we have even filmed the frustrations of the sale like we've yeah. like it's raw oh yeah it's raw like there was there's frustrations with emails there's frustrations in phone calls there uh not and not just the sale either just frustrations in business there's mm -hmm. frustrations in, in all of it. We have filmed all this. I'm talking the camera's been glued and, and, and we filmed all of it. So June 1st is when it's going to release. Uh, uh, and we're just going to start building it from June 1st. And then we're going to have that. The, the first amount of footage is going to be kind of fast paced, little one minute things. That way people can kind of put it together and then you'll be mm -hmm. able to have a follow and then they can follow us through the journey. Love it. Love it subscribe to that i'm gonna share a bunch of them i've shared it all <laughs> just pay attention to my facebook page it'll be coming through a steady feed of what he's up to so i want to hit now on our conversation last night you really focused in on on the pursuit of always over delivering and and it's your you know it's your core value of of what you're doing so Along the terms of always over delivering, you shared a story with me about a, a client that wanted to come in and, and get your services, but 
didn't have the means to afford the services at the rate you charge. So he made you an offer and, and I think a pretty big lesson came out of that. And I, I, I kind of want to hit, hit on that a little bit. So tell me what it was and, and, and the process by saying yes to that, um, kind of where that took you. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's a fantastic story actually uh so our our average ticket sale is, isn't isn't we're a premium service so we're we're, we're mm -hmm. with premium rates so what we did mm -hmm. is uh, uh we have a program that somebody can come in it's just an easy uh uh it costs 189 bucks somebody can come in they can train with us it's a group class setting it's great so this uh, gentleman came in with his family we were i was doing a consult with him which with us our consults are free they don't cost a dime mm -hmm. And he says, I want to do the 189. Now it's a great program for us because we can, we can get them in the door. We can show them the value. Number one, show them the value. Right. And then we can, from there, we can build the relationship and upsell that sale later. That was the whole yeah. core behind that idea. And what we ended up doing is the guy said, yes, I want to do that 189. He said, great. We got through the contract. We got through everything. He said, I can only give you 20 bucks a month. Now, in my mind, I was like, dude, like, come on, man. You know, and in my mind, my mouth, on the other hand, I cardone that whole thing, <laughs> always agree, right? I was oh, like, yeah. oh, dude, right on, let's do it. So really, what happened there, <laughs> yeah, I was like, let's just do it. And he was great. And uh, so we did all the training. The training was done in a month, if that. Uh, and and uh, so basically what happened is the way I looked at it is if a guy doesn't pay me, I'm, I'm out 200 bucks. whoop de doo you know? Um, did a good but, deed. Yeah, exactly. That gentleman came in faithfully every 15th of every month and paid me my 20 bucks. Faithfully. I never called him. Not one time did I follow up with the guy. Not one time any of it. Then in return, in return, he sent us about $20,000 worth of work in return just because of people he talks to and he, and he, and he does this, right? So... Word of mouth, word of mouth, learned, mouth, baby. Yeah. Word of mouth. So the lesson I learned from this, the biggest lesson I took away from this whole thing was uh, I sat down with our crew and I told them, we've got we've to find a way to take our training and our methods and, and our knowledge and we've got to get it to the masses essentially for free. That's what, yeah. that, that has to be what we do. And that's, and we have to, we have to figure it out. And that's, and that's what we're doing. We're going to make it happen. That's what I'm talking about. Automi automate, virtualize, and train. <laughs> How'd <Right>. I do, Eddie? <laughs> 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 I might be applying for a job. What ifs? <laughs> oh, I kind of froze up there. You, can you, are you, you still with me? Yep, I got you. You there now? Okay, we're all good. Okay. We're all good. We all good. So, cool, dude. All in on one mentor. We hit, so we hit a little bit of your story. We hit mindset. I always like to hit on that mindset strong. The part of the pursuit of over-delivering and why it will work is a good foundation to go into a, an airplane jump, parachuteless, no plan B, you know, maybe... Maybe you got your cell phone on the way down, calling people. You're like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, by the way, I'm pulling out of an airplane. Uh, can you be around this area to pick me up when I hit the ground? That's where you're at. You're going in with Bradley. What? I hit mentors, people, you know, mentor strategies and tools to help you with your mindset. Let's see. I want to do this. Like, what about Bradley? Like, why Bradley? Uh, man, you know what? It's uh. Man, I don't know. I, that's that's a tough one, dude. So I think for me, why Bradley? I and, and again, I followed several mentors as of a year ago. I think the big thing for me and Brad, for for myself and Bradley, was uh, as I as I watch him do what he does, I don't see. I just see me, more of me, if you will. I mean, I don't yep. get me wrong. You know, the discussion I'm having right now with my wife is like, we should totally own an airplane. Right. I mean, I just, I totally think I should own an airplane. So, uh, but it doesn't right. mean everybody's dream is to have an airplane or whatever. Right. So it's like for me, and by the way, there's like no rhyme or reason to be right or wrong. 
that, right? So I think mm -hmm. just for me is I think I relate better that direction yeah. uh, uh, with with Brad. Uh, and I and again, I think for me, it's just seeing the lifestyle isn't as extravagant, I think, as I would be. Maybe I I don't know. That's just for me. Yeah. It's just maybe that's what it is. And and I and I love it. He's just real. That's why they call him the real Brad Lee, right? He's just real. down. Yeah. He's real, and that's why for me it was like I just see more focus with me following that than I do. And don't get me wrong, dude. I do I do Grant Cardone every day. I mm -hmm. I love Ed Milet. I love Andy Frisella. I mean, I see these guys, but the focus of where I'm driven is is really just from Brad. Brother, I can honestly say that you are driven. You're 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 doing everything that that most people won't do just because it is so it, it's it just doesn't make a lot of sense to go give sell your shit, give everything else to <laughs> Give everything else to charity and start over. But what you're going to, you know, the person, and I touched on this at the beginning of the show, the person you're going to be, win, lose, or fail on the other side of this adventure, like that guy is is going to be 10x of what the guy going into it is. Oh, yeah. And, dude, I am fired up to go on the journey with you. Like, holy cow, that's going to be the coolest part of this process. Oh yeah. And that's, and that's the biggest thing. And, and I'd say the hardest part to it is staying on track. That is truly the hardest part to all of it is, is truly staying on track. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why I don't do business plans, man. I hear people all the time. I, I get several younger entrepreneurs and some older ones that come in here and talk with me about ideas and stuff. And, and my biggest thing is they'll have this big old business plan. And I'm like, You'll never, it'll never work. You'll never find and if that the idea is great or whatever. I don't care what the business is. It will work mm -hmm. if you'll just do it. it. It doesn't matter. The idea doesn't matter. It would work. To me, it's the, it, it, it's, oh, I've got this laid out plan and you have to go great. That's a good guideline, but yeah. that's, as, that's all it is. That's, that's, that's all it is. So that's me. S some people have to have an actual Dot by dot, this is what I'm doing today, tomorrow, whatever. I don't roll that way. I can't. I'm just kind of like, I'm here. What's next? Let's go. <laughs> Love it. I wind up, I wind up. I support it too. I'm kind of the same way. Like, I know where I am and like where I want to be, but like that middle area gets a little gray, kind of, you know, you got to shift and adapt. And hey, sometimes stuff doesn't work out. Absolutely. Now, let me add to that just a little bit, too. It's not that I don't have a plan. It, 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 there's a plan there. Yeah. We know that. Uh, but I journal everything every day. So I have I have, I have, I have my goal sets. I have what I'm doing. I do that every day. So it's not like I'm just kind of floating here. I have what needs done and where yeah. I need to be. And, and one of the big things I do, we, I know we touched base on this last night, too, is I am very, very big about when I'm told no or I get an objection, about anything, I go to my uh -huh. journal, okay, I, I grab my binder, I open it up, I and I write that objection down, because it, it bothers me, I don't know, this is probably me being insecure, but it bothers me when I get told no, it pisses me off is what it does, I go in there, <laughs> I write it down, and, and maybe this is some of the people viewing or whatever, but I've never been a person that can quickly respond in an argument or not even an argument, like in anything, I've never been somebody can, 20 minutes later. I'm like, I should have said that. So, or yeah. like, Oh, this would have been perfect. So I just learned to just shut up. I write the objection down. And then later when it clicks to me, what I should have said, I'll go write down what my, what I should have done or how I should have handled the situation. And then Ooh. I stop. And then I just repeat that. I repeat it. So if it ever happens again, I know I'm right there. I know. And that's the K N O W, the no, like Cardone says, I know what has to be done. Right. And, nice. and I do that. that. That's constant. That happens every day. And for those that think they're a winner every day, I promise you, I'm not a winner every day. I lose <laughs> every day. And so on my book, it's, it's, I mean, it's right. It's over there, but um, it's, it's just, like I said, I write my goals down. Uh, uh, you know, on my goal list, I have on my goal list that I'm buying an airplane and I have a date behind that airplane. It's happening. I know what I'm buying too. I know what I'm doing and when it's happening, but
But the first step is I want to I want to show to the world, I want to show everybody, whatever, social media, however, I want to show everybody that it can be done if you just do it. Just do it. It's as simple as Boom. just just go. <laughs> it, it can be done if you just do it. That's it. That right there. Let's see some fire. Let's see some heart. Blow the screen up. Like, there it is. I mean, just do it. That's big. It's big. You can sit on an idea for three years and listen to the people tell you why it won't work. Or you can write down in your journal every reason why it will work. Just like, yeah, just like Nike, just do it. Just freaking do it. Just write it down. Write down why it will work and then only listen to that noise. Don't listen to that noise. Don't listen to all this noise. I love that. That's good advice. I'm putting it in my brain. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, let's do this. Uh, again, I hope you're getting some value from this. I hope you're as excited as we are. I thought this was a huge deal. I hope you think it is too. If you got any questions for either myself or for Garrett, drop them in the comments right now. We'll touch them. Uh, we're getting close to the one hour mark, so I don't want to keep people's time too much. Everybody's got stuff to do, and we got to get, got to, got to use our time wisely. Thank you so much, Kathy. I appreciate all your interaction. My mom was on here a minute ago when you were talking, and I didn't get a chance to say hi to her. So drop some comments in there. There's a reason. Yeah, right, Kelly? Exactly right. What's up, Kelly? All right, so we'll just kind of hang tight for a few questions. But if you were to leave, you just dropped kind of a big bomb on, uh, on something for the viewer audience. But say somebody is sitting there watching the show right now. They have the thing going. Besides, just do it. You already used that one. I'm going to take that one away from you. You're going to have to give another one. Somebody's doing something, whatever it may be. Maybe they love it. Maybe they hate it. Any scenario. What advice would you give somebody that's wanting to seek maybe a new adventure, touch it, you know, jump into a new area to get uncomfortable? What kind of, a, what, what words of wisdom can you drop to them for that? Get, uh, this isn't mine. This definitely is not my saying, but I, I live by this. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. So have yes, fun sir. with that. I make phone calls every day. I probably make about 40 to 50 calls a day. Okay. And, and all right. When I pick up my phone, right, I, I was going to pick it up and it's right in front of me. When I pick up my phone to, to, to make that <laughs> call, I'll start sweating. I'll get nervous. Like I'll do, and I just hit send, just do it, right? And I just, I just, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to wait till they answer the phone and what up, <laughs> right? Let it flow. So, uh, but I do, I make 40 to 50 calls a day. That's not near enough. I should probably be making triple that. Uh, but I get uh, sidetracked pretty easy. I can see a paper sack and be zoned out. So um, I should really yeah, do right. way more than that. But yeah. So just be Dude, comfortable. I'm going to travel back here. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. John Farian announcing it right now. He's going to start his live show and his new and his adventure. Way to go, man. Let's crush it. I'm your first guest, Dibs. And then Daniel Joseph, uh, Savage, the business plan, the deets, all of that, it's going to go down on Home of the Hustle with Eddie Martin. They're going to get into depth on what they're doing, where it's going, and, and what's in it for the world. We're just announcing it. We're breaking ground, sparking curiosity, dropping some teasers. It's going to be big, and it's going to revolutionize the world of, of uh, something. <laughs> this uh Real quick, this guy just asked, or this person just asked, do you recommend paying off credit debt before leaving a corporate job before starting a business? Uh, no, don't pay it. But it, it, you, why? You're just you're just waiting now. Yeah. That's all you're doing. You're just making an excuse. That's an excuse. That's an excuse just to wait. Just go. Mm. That's in it. Yeah. Just do it. Oh, dude, I got so Make much. I, yeah, just do it. Just run. That's that it's uh, that's but you know what that's part of holding yourself that's that's hold uh, that's part of holding yourself responsible that's what you got to do uh huh but so so that would be the the hardest thing um it, but yeah when it comes to recommending paying off credit debt if you ain't paid it now you ain't gonna pay it then <laughs> just, just do it man just just go that's you'll be fine and that's just it life. you'll be fine 
you'll be just fine. You'll be just fine. Dude, and this is straight out of Brad. It's like there's very few things in life that are not recoverable from. Like I, this, is, this is a podcast he did just a couple like a week ago maybe, but there are very few things, very few failures, very few complete. It's bad. It's real bad that you can't recover from. You know, there's obvious, obvious ones, but something like that, what's the worst that could happen? It, 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 it exactly exactly it's uh I'm t- it's, <laughs> you nailed it man that's just it and like i said i know we don't have a lot of times where i could talk all night but um you know that's that's a big one for me is uh you know uh another one on here is the least favorite thing to do is callbacks <laughs> oh yeah those suck those are tough uh and the callbacks hey. really get tough yeah the callbacks really get tough when you know when you already know that 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 call is not going to be the best call like you're not, maybe yeah. you don't, you already know you don't have any leverage in the phone call at all. That's why you're calling those. You're creating leverage. If you don't call, you're giving leverage away. You're giving it. So that is a tough callbacks are tough. They are tough. That's, I think callbacks are harder than the cold call. Yeah. I absolutely agree with you there. hundred percent. First one's all awkward and sticky at times. I know there's ways to overcome that, and s- people are good at it, and it's no sweat, no whatever, but it's awkward, man. It's like, hey, you don't know me. I don't know you, but here's what I got, and here's what I want to do. Are you interested? You know what I mean? That's It's challenging versus that guy hung up on me. He told me to screw myself. He told me to go away. Now I got to call him back. I know what the answer is going to be, but. Call him back anyway. Day. You call them back That's anyway. Huge. Even when they tell you not to call, you call anyway. <laughs> I've had, I, I had a lady, uh, real quick, I'll just quick story. I had a lady uh, uh, send me uh, my company and myself uh, summons, did a whole summons thing because our company kept calling her. And uh, she was all really upset with us. We signed her, by the way. We end up signing her. She signs with another trainer. I call her uh-huh. anyway. I called her anyway. After she told me to quit calling her, I signed with another trainer. I call her anyway, and I and all I asked her, she's like, I told you, I, si- I signed up with another trainer. I go, I understand that. How is it going? Is there anything I can answer for you? What can I do? I'm giving you this for free. That changed her whole mindset with us. I worked with her on the phone for about 10 minutes, and then about three weeks later, I stopped after that. I was like, whatever. She's clearly really upset. And she's made some <laughs> threats and we've had some phone calls that we have to stop. Uh, uh, but you know what? Next thing I know, she can, she's one of our best people that comes in for class now. She's killer uh, with her dog. Yeah. Yeah. After I was told, I stop. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's a, uh, that's a tough one. That is, that was a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Right on, man. Right on. Last minute questions. Drop him in here again. I'm gonna hop back in after the show. I'll be in the comments. Uh, so, so Lee, if if you're watching this on the replay and you're still with us, go ahead and drop a uh, drop a question. We'll get back to you. And if it's for him, uh, just tag him and, and we'll uh, we'll get to it. But, dude, anything final thoughts? How do people connect with you? Um, what do you want to? How's somebody get a hold? How's somebody follow you? Where, where are we at? Yeah, uh, honestly, if, if anybody's got ever questions or anything, that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm open. Uh, you can just PM me. That's fine here on Facebook. Just hit me up on Facebook. That's totally mm-hmm. fine. Um, kind of, hey, if I was going to leave off on any last thoughts, uh, you know, we had touched base earlier, high school dropout, couldn't read. Best thing I ever did was pick up a book. Made Best yourself uncomfortable. Yep. Best thing I ever did was pick that's- up a book. I try to knock a book out a week now. That's my goal. It may not be a different book. I might have to go back and reread some, but uh, uh, yeah, that's just it, man. That's the big thing for me. Yeah, dude, let's do it. Let's good to that. John, let's do it. 7 p.m. Rock and roll Sunday. We'll do it. Yeah. So, oh, dude, you're going to, okay. So tonight we'll, we'll just touch on this and then we're good to go. It keeps coming up. Business plan, exactly what it is coming out on home of the hustle the go ahead lock the page so you get notified when they do go live and announce what's going to happen and what's going to go down so with that brother man dude i wish you all the best you 
you're you're real as they come to me you made me you know it made it comfortable while i was in vegas at that event being able to talk to you and made it made it more comfortable being around you so i appreciate that and i appreciate getting to know you so much thank you man i appreciate everybody that uh that that joined in man this is a lot of fun i like it Right on. We'll have you back on. Maybe do an update here in a few months and uh, oh yeah, see, see how you how you doing. Absolutely, man. Thank y'all. Love you, people. Thank you. Right on, Garrett Newfield. He is driven. He's in the Driven Network. If you need him, get a hold of him. Get a hold of me. Get a hold of him. Whatever you got to do. But for all for now, for all Purdue purposes, thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. Thank you. There is a huge message in that interview. And I say it at the end of every show, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter where you're at in life. And I got I, I say this because I tell this to myself every single day, no matter where you're at, you have the ability to learn your way out of it. It only takes a decision, a definite, definite decision to change your situation. And the tricky part is being able to make that decision every single day that no matter what, I'm going to learn something new to get me out of where I'm at and get me to where I want to go. I don't care how many people are texting you, telling you it's stupid, telling you it doesn't work, what you're doing isn't working, what you're doing, stop bothering me, quit calling me, whatever it is, I can't read, I don't know how to read, I don't, I'm have credit card debt, like no matter what it is, it takes a decision to take action and move forward with your, with whatever it is you want to accomplish. So I hope you guys Got some value out of this. I thank you all for your time tonight. Connect with me. Connect with Garrett. Shoot me a message if you got any questions. And on that note, always, always stay driven.